Hello there, welcome to another video. As I told you, in this video, we want to take a look at cache key convention. How to name it, how to store it, and how to use it. So, let's just dive into the code. In previous video, we made a cache on our pull request index function of the controller. And our cache key is just put it in here as a string. But sometimes we need to change the cache key. We need to delete this cache. We need to change the content of the cache. We don't change the cache key. And uh, this is a bad practice to use a string and hard code strings in our codes. So what should we do? There are several ways. One is make a function for each cache key and uh, like request cache key and it will return a string. And if we have any parameter like user ID, we can specify here and just return something like this but it will make the codes more dirty and i have a better solution for it you are free to use anything you want uh, but this is uh, just a better practice and solution if you know any better practice or using uh, this in other ways please let me know in the comments so what we do uh, is uh, using config file. How? Uh, we need a key here. It's in a string. And we'll pass the key here. But how to fetch that, that key and where we can get that key? On config, we need to, we have a cache config here, as you can see. So in the cache config, we can make uh, keys as an array and put our keys here like uh, I can uh, separate them by models that we have or controllers we'll do this as a models so I will put the pull requests request and main index uh, or it's better to paginate uh, and put it something like this even if our cache has the parameter we can specify it in here like i want to put a user id in my cache in previous video i told you that in my pull request collection I made some authentication things for React.js here and there is some data related to user and I don't want to cache this data but even you can do this I will show you let me just do this and we will back to show that so how we can use this config in our application it's just need to use config cache keys pull requests pull request and the paginates okay it will return that cache key we can check this this is my code and as you can see pull request main is here and also the new TT on the log size 10 and it's good i can change it whenever i want and it's it will not affect on my git because i don't change the code i just change the cache key and uh, it will be better because uh, one of the solid rules is you when you want to change a file you must do uh, change it just for a one reason you cannot change this controller 
one time to change the cache key and one time to fix a bug and other stuff. It's better to separate your logic and things from the controller instead of putting everything in the controller. So uh, this is a better practice, but uh, imagine uh, that we have a user ID here. What we can do? In a video, I show you how to uh, use a sprint F and I want to use that ability in here. How? Uh, in the cache key, I will specify the user ID. How? By the sprint of a string. And this is an S3. Also, I can comment here for a better re readability in future by of user ID as this value. Okay. So how to use that? Uh, this config is the same, but before this, I must do. Uh, put it on a sprint f and uh, the config and now we can put a variable to be in here so of user and i so uh, first let's see the key as you can see my user id is one and the pull request main is formatted like this. So now in the code, I can make it better. And instead of using data here, I can use pull request here and move this data into my collection, into my cache function. Okay, uh, it will be better. It will cost my cache key sometimes less and sometimes more because uh, we have a, one cache for each users but we store uh, less data in the cache because in pull request collection we just uh, make uh, the model into the collection and um, something like we have an array and uh, the size of this collection is less than the pull request paginates and also this uh, will be unique for each user. Uh, but here, I don't want to do uh, the cache per user. You must do take care about how to cache things and why you want to cache things. Uh, and here, I don't want to cache the per user things here. But I will uh, show you in the next video about how it will be affected on our application and uh, it will be make some problem in our application and how we can fix uh, this kind of problem on cache so i hope you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe if you want and if you use your cache key or define your cache key in other way please let me know in the comments it will be better sharing knowledge also you can join the code review pals uh, discord server and let's talk there. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. See you in, see you in the next video.